Christophe ordered the palace of Saint Souci to be built near the citadel in the style of Frederick II of Prussia. In 1820, at the foot of the palace stairs near the church, the eccentric king ended his own life by shooting himself with a golden bullet fired from his silver revolver. He had repressed his subjects to such a degree that they rose up against him and forced him to commit suicide. A simple monument brings him together with the other fathers of the nation at the top of a hill near Cape Haitien. The voodoo phenomenon was born during this period of struggle in spite of the colonial authorities and repression of the church. The African guards that traveled in the slaves' minds had intermingled with the Catholic doctrine of the settlers. A new religion had been born. With the flags that represented the different tribes of their ancestors, the Lacus or voodoo monasteries are spread all over the country. They are normally located in places where the slaves that had run away from the plantations hid to pray. Voodoo is a religion that is very closely linked with nature and many of its deities dwell in rivers, valleys and mountains. There are many natural settings which are real sanctuaries. The faithful retreat to these places to meditate and meet their luas, or family spirits, and the principal forces of the universe. These are spiritual observatories that enable them to communicate with the great beyond. Voodoo determines and presides over Haitian society. It is always present in a world where everything that happens, be it good or bad, is attributed to the direct intervention of the spirits. Beach is a place of pilgrimage. Preachers from the most distant parts of the country come here to perform Guinea ceremonies and beseech the favor of Azuli, Mother Earth, the goddess of love, who is identified in syncretism with the Virgin Mary. In the shade of these sacred trees, Families take turns to perform their ceremonies. They mainly offer food and rum and wait for Azuli to appear for her to take possession of someone's body. In this case, the woman with the red scarf. Azuli likes to flirt and seduces people without distinguishing between sexes. She may enter the body of a man or of a woman, but everybody will immediately recognize her because of her suggestive movements. Each preacher recognizes different beings in this possession. Its syncretic translation would be the Virgin of High Grace, the Black Virgin or the Virgin of Monte Carmelo, and sometimes Saint Philomena, identified in voodoo with the siren who comes out of the sea or out of fresh water. Other participants also go into deep trances. People help them and respect them as in these movements their souls are outside their bodies. The luas or spirits have taken over their bodies in order to express their wishes. 
During these processions, there are frequent displays of the protection conferred on them by the influence of the deity that dwells inside them. Each lua has different colors, so different colored scarves are used to call them. White carlin powder is used to attract certain deities and to identify them. Ursuli has just recognized one of her followers by the rings that adorn his hands. These are wedding rings that show that the man has married her. Each person may marry his protective lua. They gather their relations and witnesses together and go to the Ongfo or Voodoo Temple, where a mystic wedding is held. From this moment on, the earthly spouse will have to abstain from sexual intercourse on certain days specified by his lua. For example, Ertsuli prescribes Tuesdays and Thursdays, and on these days she may become before her servants in her dreams. Here in Limonat, Voodoo lives alongside the church. The devotees alternate their religious customs without any problems. From the olden days, when the settlers prohibited their African religious services, the slaves were forced to praise their gods whilst kneeling before a Catholic icon. In this way, syncretism arose and the majority of the Lua have their corresponding Christian deity or saint.